Okay, uh, welcome to chapter 11. Uh, this is the chapter where we're actually going to start doing something. The, it's called uh, managing the implementation, but it's the part of the SDLC where you quit your yapping and actually start doing something. You're actually going to build the system. Either you're going to code the system or you're going to buy the system or whatever it is, you're actually going to get something done that, uh, that you actually got paid to do. Okay, uh, there's only one more phase after that. And that's the one where we, you know, do the maintenance and upgrades and all the rest of those things. You know, the maintenance cycle. So let's crank up. And uh, page 448. I'm going to go through the the uh, chapter objectives just to make sure we don't miss anything. So it says, explain the importance of software quality assurance. Uh, describe application development using the structured, object-oriented, and agile methods. Draw a structure chart showing the top-down design, modular design, cohesion, and coupling. Those are two terms we're going to come back to haunt you. Explain the coding process. Explain unit testing, integration testing, system testing. Differentiate between program, system operation, and user documentation. Uh, list the main steps in, in how to, you're going to install and evaluate a system. Develop training plans for various users. Describe data conversion and changeover options. Uh, explain post-implementation evaluation and the final report to management. Okay, as always, it got that really cool preview case on uh, page 449, that kind of that continuing story throughout the entire book. Okay, on page 450, they talk about software quality assurance. Now you got to remember now in, in the 50s quality assurance really took off big time in the US and other countries uh, and it was primarily designed for manufacturing you know you can kind of envision when you read the books you can kind of envision they were talking about you know building automobiles or something where they wanted to measure every little step and uh, whenever something got out of, of tolerance you know they could detect when and where it got out of tolerance and come up with a solution so they had these all these controls and uh, measurement techniques and recording techniques all designed to to continuously improve the quality of the product um, and then somebody said well let's do this with software and all the software people went ha you gotta be kidding we, you can't do that with software and of course they were wrong you can and so the term software engineering kinda came up to kind of re-emphasize the idea that this is not an amorphous blob. This is a, a structured, ordered thing, and it is very similar to building an automobile with regard to the quality assurance things that you have to do. Okay, so let me just read some of this kind of overview part. Uh, it talks about companies are in, intensely concerned with the quality of their products. I would certainly hope so. And the main objective of the quality assurance is to, is to avoid problems Identify them as soon as possible. So it's not to not to catch errors necessarily. That's not the point. The point is to prevent errors or to just continuously make things better and better and better every single time. So how could how how do we get poor quality? I mean, how does it happen? Well, it can result from you know inaccurate requirements. So you didn't get the requirements right design problems, coding problems, faulty documentation, or bad testing. Any one of those things can make this thing fail. You know, your project is dependent on an awful lot of things. And uh, if you were to describe the, the number one thing that caused a failure to your, to your project, you would probably remember that for the next time you did a project, right? Well, you just described process quality control. You identified a problem, and you're going to apply uh, more attention to it the next iteration. That's just like building a car. Okay. So some more terms. Software engineering, um, a, a software development process that stresses solid design, accurate documentation, and careful testing. And basically, it's a made-up word that tries to emphasize the fact that software is indeed you know a structured process that you can model. Okay. Uh, Carnegie Mellon came up with this really cool um, software engineering lab where they actually started looking at all these things and, and came up with a, a technique what they call the maturity model. I, kinda, I actually kind of like that. And this maturity model doesn't necessarily apply only to software. I mean we use the maturity model for practically 
everything. And it looks like this. So when you're doing something, when you're building a car or doing some software, you're probably at one of these levels. The, the, the least mature that an organization could be in is where you know, you're just doing whatever they have to want to do and things just happen. And then the next one is, okay, you're kind of listening to feedback and maybe you're taking things into consideration. The next one is, instead of just listening to feedback, you actually wrote down what it is your goals were going to be. You wrote down what your tolerances were going to be and then now you're measuring them. The next step up is, okay, I've, I've got a system in place, I'm measuring these things, I'm identifying where things go wrong, and then, the, and then the top maturity level is, you know, you've got all the bugs out, and now you're, all you're doing is just tweaking it a little bit to make things a little better every single time. Now, I will tell you, there are organizations that never reach beyond, like, maturity level three. Not going to happen. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. So, I'm not saying that the goal is to get all the way to maturity level five every single time. Philosophically, yeah, okay, they should all be at, at level five. But in, in the real world, where you're probably going to be getting a job, in the real world, you may, three might be the, the most you can help to, hope to get to. So this maturity model basically describes, you know, the, the process. And hopefully you're, you're going uphill uh, but not necessarily going to achieve 100% of these things. Okay. Um, you've probably heard of, you know, the ISO, you know, the ISO standards for, you know, that's ISO standards for practically everything. Uh, if you're a computer geek, you know about the ISO standard with regard to, you know, CD-ROM format. Well, there's actually one, there's an ISO standard called ISO 9000, which is basically the process control. And um, you'll see companies that um, will proudly advertise, we're ISO 9000 certified. And it could be anything. It could be a meat market. It doesn't matter what the business is. It's you've put the system in place to record your quality and you've demonstrated that you've been able to, to use that data to make things better. The certification process is actually pretty doggone tough because not only do you have to show, well, I'm collecting all this data and we're reviewing it. Okay, but have you used any of that data to make a decision? And it's like, huh? So it's not enough to collect the data and analyze it. You're supposed to react to that data and do something. Uh, you know, change out this part or hire additional people or do something and, and to be ISO certified you have to demonstrate that the reason why you swap out the piece of equipment or you know whatever it is you did the reason why you did that is because of this monitoring over here that you performed so that's kind of cool and it, it demonstrates the their your commitment towards quality so you know it, you know how car manufacturers you know love to talk about you know quality 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 um, this is how a, a company doing practically anything, you know, meat market or a software company, can say, you know, we have a commitment to quality. We're ISO 9000 certified. Anyway, it is a big business. It's a big thing. It's not taken lightly. I mean, you don't just say, sure, why not? I ain't got anything to do. Let's go ahead and get ISO 9000 certified. No, 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 no. That's a heck of a lot involved. Uh, there's a cost, essentially, of having the labor and all and setting things up. Okay. So continuing on page uh, 452, they talk about the overview of application development. So, you know, the whole point of application development is to take all those charts and graphs and diagrams that you've created in all the previous and actually do something with them. Um, next, we talk about, you know, the structured analysis. We mentioned kind of these things before. We'll go through it in a little bit more detail. You know, object-oriented analysis and agile methods those are the three choices basically you have for the how to do development and then of course the objective is to translate those designs into something real on uh, on page 452 this is kind of a review I would have hoped and they talk about the review of system design let me just blast through this list really quickly talk about requirements modeling that functional decomposition the structured data, the data flow diagrams, the case, the class diagram, sequence diagram, state transits, activities, development strategy, user interface, entity relationship, 
and overall system architecture. Wow, that one list is chapters one through 10. The entire summary of chapter one through 10, all there in one page. Okay, so let's talk about application development and some of the choices. So uh, one of the choices, of course, is the, the traditional structured SDLC style uh, analysis where you know I've, I've, I've got my planning and then I do my development and then I do testing. Uh, this is all inside the SDLC model, so I'm, I didn't mean to imply this that was the SDLC model. So this is the traditional method where you know you do modules, you do individual pieces and you bolt everything together. Now this has been used forever and it works quite well. Uh, it is of course not the only way of doing business. This is uh, the structured technique. Uh, Agile, as we've mentioned lots of times before, is a more iterative type of process. It looks something like this, where I start and I end up getting a, a, a short story from the user. And then I put something together and I say, is this what I heard you say? And they go, well, yeah, but what about this? And you go, oh, okay. So you do it again and again and again. And it takes very, very tight uh, relationship between the developers and the users. Um, I, I'm going to go off on a tangent because we have an entire section of the of the the the, uh, the book talking about Agile in just a few more pages. But are coders typically um, very people oriented kind of folk who are very likable and easy to get along with and enjoy having conversations with people. What do you think? I mean, is that the kind of people that, that you'd expect to be the life of the party and be able to charm users and make them feel comfortable? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hold that thought. So, yes, we are going to be talking about this in, in a little bit more detail. Uh, the next section, couple pages talk about just kind of a review of quite frankly, uh, programming logic and design course. Talks about, you know, the development tools where you have an entity relationship diagram, you know, I'm not gonna go through that again because we just had a chapter on that. Flow chart, pseudocode, and they're all documentation techniques to kind of help the, the programmer, you know, reach the, the end product. The um, decision tables and decision trees, remember all that from just a few chapters back? And then on page 455 they talk about the, the project management tools and um, yeah you can have some tools that can help you do a project and we talked about you know the project management tools could be building a building or it could be you know programming a, a, a particular package the same tools apply you know the Gantt charts and all those kinds of things uh, then they talk about these structure charts uh, and I'm kind of going to skip on that a bit because I've got some real life charts I'm going to show you in just a few minutes so let's go through what their little goofy chart thing. They talk about you know what a module is and uh, you know data coupling, meaning that there's data passing back and forth between two boxes, and then there's control coupling where there's something passing back and forth between the module, but not necessarily data. It could be like an authorization code or something. And then the, you know conditions, if statements, you know branching, it could go to the left, go to the right, and looping. And hopefully none of these terms are new to you. Okay. You should know sequences, looping, conditions. All right. But on page 457, there's some terms in here which I do want you to pay attention to. Hint, hint, hint. Ding, 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 ding. Does that sound like a uh, test question? And that is the business of cohesion and coupling. And doggone it, we're coming up to the 15-minute mark, so you'll have to just wait a few more seconds before you can find out what that's all about. 